The National Soccer Coaches Association of America is proud to be the world's largest soccer coaches organization. And the NSCAA is proud to bring you the October 22nd edition of the weekly college highlights and ranking show that starts right now. For NSCAA TV, I'm Kyle Straub, and after the much anticipated top five matchup, the number four team, North Carolina Tar Heels, drop a tough one at home, two to nothing, to the number one team in the land and still unbeaten Virginia Cavaliers. It was a goal in the 13th minute by Brittany Radcliffe that proved to be the game winner as we take a look at the highlights. Meg Morris in her fourth year at Carolina has started all four years for the Tar Heels. This one's put into the box and tipped by Radcliffe. And it's going to be a goal as Heberlin's not able to get there in time. And Virginia takes a 1-0 lead at 32-01 on the clock. Colaprico sends it down the far sideline for Virginia, defended by Murray. This ball loose in the box, another shot by Radcliffe. This one's saved by Heberlin. Ball deflected off of Munnerlin. She's got it in the box. She takes a shot and it's saved by Stearns. To Kelly McFarland for North Carolina making a run downfield. Alexa Newfield settles this one. She takes a shot. Far post just misses wide. Will go out of bounds for a goal kick. Stepping up and intercepting that pass is Virginia. They'll come across midfield, that's Emily Sonnet. This ball's in the box, a shot and a goal for Virginia. Mackenzie Doniak. Doniak was there and able to finish across the frame on the near post. Give Virginia some cushion and now North Carolina really gonna have to push as they have a shot here in the box. They take this shot, it's right at Stearns, and she handles this one easily. As the Virginia Cavaliers take a two to nothing victory here in Chapel Hill. Thank you, Kyle, and we welcome you to the Continental Tire Studios just down the road from Fetzer Field, where it was indeed an impressive win for Virginia and another huge weekend of college soccer. And guess what? We have another huge show for you here. Let's take a look and what's on tap for today. It is a big one in the women First of all, we'll have a visit from the head coach of UNC, Anson Dorrance. We'll have highlights and a word with Chugger Adair from Virginia Tech. We'll take a look at Wake Forest. Katie Stengel had to shut it down. An inside look at Tiffany Roberts and the UCF women's soccer team. Brandon Kennard will visit with Grand Valley State U and we'll have all the rankings and the players of the week. That's just on the women's side. A little later on on the men's side, Jay Vitovich, the head coach of Wake Forest, Wake Forest will be here. We'll visit with smiling Bob Warming, the head coach of Penn State. We'll take a look at the impressive program of Division III's Wisconsin Oshkosh. We'll also have an NAI update from Alan Grosbach. That and more at all the rankings and players of the week right here. And of course, the UNC Tar Heels did lose a big game on Sunday to Virginia, but they're still ranked in the top 10 with an impressive 13-3 and record. And without question, UNC has been the most dominant college sports team, any sport of any kind. And let's take a look at why. Under the direction of the great Anson Dorrance, UNC has simply been incredible. Take a look at that right there. An overall record of 756, 55 and 29, 22 national championships, 26 college cups, 20 ACC tournament champions to go with 20 ACC tournament titles, 19 national players of the year. And who can forget that Anson Dorrance was actually the head coach of the U.S. women winning the first ever Women's World Cup, and I'd like to say Anson Dorrance is a good friend. I've worked with him for such a long time, and we welcome him into the program. Anson, 35 years you've been coaching. You look like you'd go another 35. <laughs> Actually, no, but thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've really enjoyed this. So, you know, I lead a, an incredibly gilded life. Um, what a wonderful opportunity for uh, us to stay in this game. Uh, uh, I enjoyed working with you. 
Uh, and I love the uh, the show. I mean, what you guys are doing uh, each week uh, for our game uh, is fantastic. So thank you. Well, I appreciate it. Obviously, we were hoping you went on Sunday against Virginia and come down a little bit happier times. But you're always so magnanimous about it, Anson. Talk about that game. It's never easy in the ACC. Well, you know, uh, Steve Swanson has done a great job at Virginia. His kids just fought like lions. We didn't really get a, a good sniff in the game. Uh, they just played tremendous defense. Uh, uh, they scored two very nice goals, one engineered off a throw-in. Uh, obviously, we hope to do better protecting that. Uh, but they had a wonderful counterattacking goal late in the second half that put the game away. And I just have to give him and his, his kids a, a great credit. Uh, they played a tremendous game. We just really struggled to get anything going in uh, our attacking third. Anson, such a tremendous history. As we roll to the highlights here, just to visit in your offices, you've got trophies stacked like books, just one after another. And I know you're proud of that, but then also I know you're proud of all the players that have won National Player of the Year and that are now coaching at different levels. Look at all that history. When you see that, what's it mean to you, Coach? Well, what was really cool is uh, uh, Bubba Cunningham came in, our new athletic director, and uh, decided he wanted to try to spruce up uh, the teams that uh, were winning championships. And just coincidentally, uh, Carlos Samuano won a national championship his first year as a men's coach here. And then we won one last year. And uh, with this, uh, he decided to invest in our building. So if you look around the building, uh, it's really been uh, well done. Uh, we brought in some people to design things. And they've done a nice job with our history, with the men's history. And it's been really enjoyable uh, uh, seeing all the pieces put together in the building, honoring all the great players that we've had and, and all the great players that have come through the men's program. So it's been, it's been kind of cool. Well, we're going to keep you here because I know you've got your hand on the heartbeat of college soccer. Let's take a look at the storylines in women's college soccer and of course you already talked about Steve Swanson Virginia very impressive 16 and 0 Virginia Tech another ACC school is doing fantastic under Chugger Adair Notre Dame has hit a rough pass but that's because it's never easy in the ACC right coach yeah I mean uh, what's interesting uh, is uh, you can bring in a quality program like Notre Dame drop them into our conference and what they end up discovering is every single game is a nightmare and not just uh, against the traditionally elite teams. Uh, so uh, I think uh, Notre Dame will adjust. Obviously, Randy's an excellent coach. Uh, he'll continue to recruit well uh, with Notre Dame and the ACC now is recruiting uh, Beacons. Uh, but every single game in the conference is a nightmare. Uh, Chugger has done an amazing job at uh, Virginia Tech. Uh, that was actually our first conference game. It's always tough to, to win uh, in Blacksburg. Uh, so there's no easy game in the conference right now, and I think uh, Randy's discovering that. Well said, Anson. Other teams climbing the ladder, Penn State, Florida, Santa Clara, West Virginia, and UCF. We'll have a little bit more on Tiffany Roberts' team a little bit later. Leading the country right now from Illinois, Janelle Flaws, and from Cal Poly, Elise Kriegoff. They have 18 goals. All right, Coach, the new rankings are out. Let's take a look at it here. No surprise, Virginia at number one. You look at it, UCLA, Florida State. What are some teams that pop out at you, Anson? Well, I look at those top four. We've played every one of them, uh, and it's a nightmare. I mean, that's the sort of schedule you end up playing in the conference. Uh, we also had an opportunity to play UCLA because uh, Robbie Church brought them into the Duke uh, tournament. So uh, obviously all of us try to play elite teams to improve our RPI. And you can look at that top 10 and see that uh, Michigan is now emerging uh, under the great job of the former U.S. national coach that's doing a nice job building it there. We played West Virginia as well. They are absolutely outstanding. They've got a center back that I think is going to be one of the great collegiate center backs, a young Canadian that's brilliant. Obviously, Stanford has talent all over the field. Uh, Florida and Becky always do a great job down there. Uh, Portland, uh, we lost to them last year out there. Uh, this is uh, a classic for uh, uh, the game with new teams emerging, but old traditional powers fighting their way to stay in the top 10. So I think every team in that top 10 can beat anyone. Virginia probably has a bit of a separation over the rest of us, but uh, uh, that's a very strong group you've got listed there. Chugger Adair's done a great job at Virginia Tech, and they got a thrilling win over the weekend against Tony Deleuze's Wake Forest team. Let's take a look. All right, Coach, good win. What were your thoughts on tonight's game? Well, I thought we did we did a good job battling and competing in in the end. Uh, it was a tough game. Wake uh, Wake had a very good game plan, and and it, and they almost worked to per to perfection. I mean, they they were dangerous, had got the lead, and our girls uh, battled back. You know, it was really fortunate for us to score the tying goal early in that set, you know, first half before we go into halftime down. Uh, it was key for for Mayros to come in and and show a little savviness and score that goal for us. Um, you know, the longer that stay that we stayed climbing back the more difficult it becomes so it was good I thought the second half we played much better than the first uh, and and were much more aggressive in the attacking third I thought that that proved to be 
uh, the, I guess the winning component for us was just be aggressive around the box, and you know it worked out for us, so it was good. And so you'd say that was the key tonight, just staying aggressive, getting the ball into the box? Uh, yeah, I think for us, I mean, we have depth in our attack right now, which has been tremendous for us. Uh, so we were able to rest, you know, rest the girls and balance their minutes, and they were able to provide good energy up front. So I think we, we controlled much of the game uh, in the second half, and we, were, we, we continued to attack. So, you know, attacking-minded, you know, was able to, to get the result. And how important has uh, goalkeeper Dale Colpitt been to this team this year? Oh, she's been tremendous. She's she's experienced, you know, as a senior, uh, and, and she's been good. She's very steady, consistent uh, player who, who gives us uh, confidence in the goal. So she's been great. Uh, she keeps recording shutouts and things like that. Um, she's actually been struggling with the flu today, so she was questionable of playing or not today. So we, uh, it was a game time decision, and, and she she manned up and did a good job there. And looking at the season nationally as the the scope. Uh, for you, you have to feel like you know you're up there. You're sixth in the rankings. You're seventh in the RPI, but maybe still team, people see Virginia Tech in the top ten and think uh, and get a little bit surprised by that. How do you garner the respect that some of these other ACC teams get? Well, I think it's it's going to be year have to be year in year out years like this. You know the 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 tradition that's within the ACC conference is incredible. You know that 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 you know UNC and some of the other schools have, have just created over the years. It's 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 something that we've just got to bring in year in year out and and that'll grow. You know I think it's important for us to build off this season uh, as much as we can. And you know the girls are, are doing a great job. They're competing and and stepping up to the plate right now and in in, in every fashion. So we got to keep doing that. And with the way you're playing, is College Cup is that the the, the goal in mind at this point? Well, the goal for us right now is to uh, focus uh, on Pitt Sunday, and then we'll go from there. So game time, game by game, that's an old cliche, but we've got to focus on that. I think, you know, for us this week, you know, after a big win against Notre Dame, it was hard motivationally for the girls to get focused. I think we were looking at some of the rankings and things like that, and it's maybe new to us being so high, but we've got to focus on the games and what we do well, and Pitt's the next game up Sunday, so uh, they're going to be waiting for us. Uh, they've got a week off, so we've got to be ready for that match. Thank you, Coach. Way to go, Chugger. Now, Anson, looking at Wake Forest, they lose a big-time player in Katie Stengel. She was diagnosed with deep vein thrombosis. She has two blood clots in her left leg, and that's a huge loss for Wake Forest. Well, it is. Uh, well, what a remarkable player, one of the most complete players ever to come into the collegiate game, one of the top players ever in the ACC. Uh, she's kind of like a Michelle Akers in the different ways she can beat you. She can beat you out of the air. She can beat you with either foot. Uh, she doesn't need a lot of shots to finish one, so she's got a really good strike rate. Uh, obviously a wonderful target. She can hold the ball, and yeah, that's an absolutely huge loss uh, for Wake and the conference. Three-time NSCA All-American, 2011 ACC Offensive Player of the Year, the first player since Mia Hamm to lead the ACC in goal scoring two years in a row and a member of that great U.S. Under-20 team as well. All right, as we go back and take a look at the top at the number 19 right there. At number 19, you see Central Florida led by Tiffany Roberts. How about the job she's done? Well, she's done a great job, but I think we first got to give credit to Amanda Cromwell that built that program. I mean, let's face it, they don't get first pick in recruiting, and Amanda built it. In fact, they knocked us out of the NCAA tournament one year on PKs uh, down in Gainesville, and I think Amanda did a great job. I think they hired really well in pulling Tiffany in. Uh, Tiffany has a tremendous pedigree. Obviously, she played for us, played uh, on the national team. She's a charismatic uh, young coach, and you're right. She's doing an absolutely fantastic job. Tiffany Roberts Sahadik, I should say it correctly, is coaching with her husband, Tim, won two national championships for you at UNC in 96 and 97. And after a great run at VCU, she now has UCF on a roll. They beat Memphis 4-1 on Sunday and got a huge win against Rutgers 2-1 with this game winner. An unbelievable sequence as Rutgers hammers it in there, Anson. And then UCF breaks out just the way you teach them right here. They get it out to the right. Now watch them attack and watch them not give up after the shot. It'll come in the other side. The Rutgers goalkeeper will come out. They continue their run, and then it's finished there by Kayla Adamek, the freshman rebounder. She'll put it in. Kayla Adamek, rather. And uh, how about that goal? And then look at Tiffany Roberts right here, as you mentioned. First season, two national titles at UNC, World Cup and Olympic champion, 110 USA caps. Yeah, just a wonderful resume. She's got a great pedigree. <clears throat> but if you met her, you know, she doesn't wear any of this. She doesn't have an arrogance about herself. She's just got a very uh, engaging uh, personality. Uh, she's fun to be with. I know she's going to be an absolutely brilliant recruiter there. I know the kids that play for her absolutely love playing for her. But you know what's interesting? Underneath this, this very uh, sort of feminine, uh, friendly demeanor is just the... Uh, 
heart of a lion. I mean, the kid was an amazing competitor for me and for Tony DiCicco uh, on the U.S. Uh, women's national team and Olympic teams. I mean, just a great kid. Uh, you love it when good things happen to good people, and this is a great example of that. And here's an even better example as we spend time with Tiffany roberts Hadick and her husband, Tim. I think it was key for us to, to win the South Florida game. We used that momentum going forward against uh, UConn, who's a very tough opponent in our conference. So we had a great first half, even though we weren't able to put away some of our chances. I think it just kept rolling. So going into Temple again, I thought we started very strong against Temple. We still were the aggressor and, and didn't get frustrated and came out with a win. We're obviously on a roll right now. Um, so if you just you look at a stat sheet, what we're getting are wins. Um, you know, we have really high standards, so we, we're absolutely happy with where we are. Um, we're eager to continue on this route, um, but we definitely feel like there are areas where we can sharpen up a little bit. If, you know, the championship is what we want. All those little details are going to matter. We're getting the results. Um, there's something to be said for that. I think it was a big benefit to us as a new staff coming in to be able to spend so much time with the team off of the field and kind of get to know their personalities and the leadership dynamic and the chemistry. Um, but at the same time, I think maybe it was a benefit to the players as well to get to see us kind of in a casual setting sometimes, get to see us a little bit in our personalities and, and get to learn, you know, a little bit about us that way. Hawaii, I think, definitely brought us together. Like, we got to go to the beach and, like, experience some things. So I think the team, like, really bonded with them and like we're all getting closer and closer. I mean them being married kind of is a start of a family kind of if you say it like that. So um, they give us the feeling of <laughs> it sounds a bit about mom and dad. So they are our coaches we know to respect them but um, it's not like they're up here and we're down here so there is respect but we're all kind of on the same kind of pot. I think in general when we talk to folks like you know, whether we're out on the recruiting trail, or we're just, you know, out running errands or something. Whenever we meet folks who, you know, for the first time here that we coach together, I think usually people get a smile on their face and they're like, you work with your wife or you work with your husband? I could never do that. That's like the running joke. But um, we don't know, you know, anything different and it works for us. Having the opportunity to share, you know, our soccer lifestyle and our job with our children, our little girls, is, is really like a dream come true. Cause on the U.S. Women's National Team, I had teammates that brought their children with us on the road overseas, and they really became part of the team's family. And I remember thinking, oh, I wish I can do that. And although I'm not a player, having my children, you know, come with me, I'm a coach. And so they get to be in that same environment. So having role models, um, the players are their role models, and I wouldn't want anything more than that. For us, it's really not a cliche to say that we truly have a family environment, um, you know, because Tim and Tiff are married, uh, so they are a family. So it's really easy to encompass what family is about uh, because, I mean, that's their life, you know, and, and it sort of carries over into work. Go <laughs> excited that um, we have this unbeaten streak going but we're not really talking about it to be honest um, we're staying focused one game at a time and uh, we really feel if we focus on the process and not be as result oriented um, if we just control all of the little details then the result will be there we want to be at the top of the conference and and we had to put Louisville away on Sunday in order to, to be there and continue on with our goals, but um, I just think if we focus on each game, um, we'll get to where we want to go. games in a row for Tiffany Roberts, Sahedic, and UCF. And your final five there, Anson, thoughts on any of those teams? 
Well, obviously, uh, Wake would be a lot higher if Stengel were uh, or were healthy. Uh, BYU had a great team last year. We played them in the uh, NCAA tournament, so we know their quality, and they certainly have some quality players remaining. Nebraska's coming back. That's kind of cool. Uh, I have a lot of respect uh, for John at Nebraska and what he's doing. And these other teams, obviously, uh, fighting their way through the, uh, the tough SEC are demonstrating they can play with the top uh, teams in the country as well. Hanson Maya Hayes is your NSCAA Disney Soccer Player of the Week, leading Penn State to two Big Ten victories last week as she notched three goals. You saw her in the national championship game a year ago. Yeah, I mean, she's, uh, she's wonderful. In fact, we had to change our 3-4-3 three, three to accommodate her. Uh, she was so tough to deal with up there. We had to make adjustments because of her talent. So, yeah, there's a remarkable player, one of the elite players playing uh, in collegiate soccer right now will be a great professional. Today's show was presented by Continental Tire, innovative technology, driving confidence. Learn more at ContinentalTire.com. And Continental Tire is also proud to sponsor the Top 25. Now, this year's College Cup will be right back down the road in Cary, North Carolina, where the Tar Heels won it all in 2003, 2006, and 2008. Anson, as we say goodbye to you, it's here again this year. How great would it be to win it again down the road at Wake Med Soccer Park? Well, obviously, I think we've got to look at some of the other teams that are uh, grinding a little bit better than we are. But, yeah, I mean, it'd be cool to, to end up with a top four seed, uh, to play at home all the way if we can do that, and then, obviously, uh, having it here would be wonderful. 22 of the last 32 national championships have gone to this man right here, Anson Dorns, the head coach of the UNC women's soccer team. Thanks so much for being on the show, Anson. Game, my pleasure. Good and, to be here. And good luck the rest of the way. We come back, Jay Vidovich, head coach of Wake Forest, and we'll also break down the rest of women's college soccer right here on the NSCAA Weekly College Highlights and Review Show on NSCAA TV. There's a reason soccer is called the beautiful game. Experience it live at the 2013 NCAA Women's College Cup, December 6th and 8th at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. Affordable tickets now available at NCAA.com slash Women's College Cup. Hey, Missy. Sorry I'm late. That's okay. I just don't want you boys to be late for your big game. Okay, have fun! I'll be right here after the game! Continental Tire, the official tire of Major League Soccer. Tra, la, la, tra, la, tra, la. Pleasure. Take aim, America. Focus on your target and not the goalkeeper, and you will score more goals and win more matches. Practicing with the ultimate goal sports targets is the best way to train you to score more goals. Simply attach the Velcro straps to the net, and you are ready for the best shooting practice around. As a special offer, we'll send you a package of two Red Bullseye Ultimate Goal Sports Targets for only $19.99. Sports targets are also great for helping you hit the mark in baseball, tennis, hockey, lacrosse, and more. And for a limited time, we'll double your offer and send you two blue sports targets free. Just pay separate processing and handling. Take aim, America, and improve your game with the ultimate goal sports targets. Here's how to order. Welcome back to the Continental Tire Studios right here in Chapel Hill. I want to thank the great Anson Dorns, head coach of the UNC women's soccer team, for getting the women's portion of this great show underway. Let's take a look now at the rest of women's college soccer as we take a look at the Division II Top Ten. An impressive list indeed, of course, though Grand Valley State continues to remain unbeaten at 12-0-1. They're located in Allendale, Michigan. They're led by head coach Dave Diani. And Zach Derlin files this report on the Lakers' amazing success in the past several years. 
The Grand Valley State women's soccer team burst onto the national scene in 2006 by advancing to the Division II National Championship game. Although the Lakers fell to Metro State, it proved to be just the beginning of one of the most successful runs in all of college soccer. Over the past seven seasons, Grand Valley State has won two national titles, advanced to six Final Fours, and claimed eight consecutive Great Lakes Intercollegiate Athletic Conference Championships. Head coach Dave Diani, who was in his 11th season as head coach of the Lakers, took some time to talk about how the program has been able to maintain the success. Yeah, the big key is the, to be consistent. You have to be consistent in the message you send to your team, uh, the message that the players um you know, send to one another the consistent uh, level of energy, the focus, and the goals. Diani's teams have all shared one common trait, outstanding defense. And this year's back line may be his best yet. Senior tri-captains Taylor Callen, Kayla Kimball, and Taylor Ward have been the focal points of a defense that has yet to allow a goal through 13 matches, which is the second longest shutout streak in Division II history. Um, I think our chemistry in the back, we've been playing together for quite some time now, so we all know you know, how each other works and what we need to do. And I think just um, being the stronger line of, of the team so far, it's been really good for us. That, there's the saying that is old for a reason, defense wins championships. And, um, you know, we want to be in the game because we we haven't given up goals. And uh, we as a group and as a team, not just the defenders, the goalkeepers are committed to, to defending and staying in games longer and giving our offense an opportunity to score goals. The Lakers are much more than a defensive juggernaut, though. Over its last seven matches, Grand Valley State has outscored opponents 48 to nothing, and 15 different players have scored a goal this season. Six have found the back of the net at least five times. These are astounding numbers, especially considering the fact the Lakers lost five of their top six scorers at the end of the 2012 campaign. Right. I think it was something that we've been working on um, throughout preseason and the beginning of the season, and it was just a matter of time for things to start clicking, and um, I think right around the end of September is when all that happened, and it really showed in, uh, the outcomes of our games. It's, uh, we spent an awful lot of time on in, on the attack uh, with the underclassmen. Um, I mean, we have a great deal of potential there and talent, uh, but it's you know it's still got to get fulfilled each day in terms of how they train and the rec- you know how they understand what you know the college level is what's needed energy level wise and. Uh, tactically being aware and technically being efficient. And so it's been very rewarding. I think it's a group that everyone wants to succeed. Uh, we're certainly not arrived yet, um, but we're, we're a little bit more consistent. Diani and the Lakers will now turn their attention to the little things as they prepare to make a run at a fifth straight Final Four in November. And this group has been very good because we train hard and they push one another and hold each other accountable. So as we move on and the season gets longer and the bodies get a little bit more tired, we have to focus on the little things. Uh, nutrition, sleep, um, mental focus to be able to come to practice and get the most out of every day. And if we can do that, then I think we uh, will have an opportunity to be there in the end. Reporting for NSCAA TV, I'm Zach Durlam. All right, Zach, thank you so much. And Megan Fee is your Disney Soccer NSCA Player of the Week. The goalkeeper tallied a pair of clean sheet victories for the weekend, running her shutout total to six on the year. The GLVC Defensive Player of the Week made a total of 15 saves on the weekend in 195 minutes of work. Let's take a look now at Division Three women's soccer. You see there at number eight, Montclair State. Patrick Nauter in his fourth season has Montclair State moving up the ladder. At number three, Trinity is led by Lance Key. He's a former top Tiger returns to his alma mater and now in his 10th season. And how about Wheaton? Coach Pete Felsk, 26 seasons. They beat Illinois Westland 2 to nothing to remain number one. And your Division Three Disney Soccer Player of the Week, Krista Ledden, set the UMass Boston program record for goals and points in a single game with 10. And her latest goal scoring production has included two hat tricks and sent UMass Boston in the first place in the Little East Conference. Of course, your Player of the Week is brought to you by Disney Soccer, and Disney welcomes you to the Proving Ground. Disney Soccer provides elite athletes and their families a once-in-a-lifetime tournament travel experience. During the Disney Soccer Showcase, athletes have the opportunity to play in front of the top college coaches across the country. Teams who compete at the ESPN Wide World Sports Complex will receive the first-class service that only Disney can offer. There's a challenge for players of all ages and all levels. To apply for the Disney Soccer Showcase or learn more about the Disney Soccer Youth Tournaments, visit us today at DisneySoccer.com. Let's roll on and take a quick look at the Junior College Division I 
for women. We already featured the number one team in the country, Iowa Western Community College. They are rolling along at 17-1-0. But how about Tracy Ham at number eight for Santa Rosa Junior College? She, she starred at Cal Berkeley, also coached there, now getting it done at the junior college level at number eight. And then we take a look here at your Division Three women's rankings as well, and that is indeed where you find Santa Rosa Junior College. They are 10-2-1 on the season. Congratulations to all of those teams in women Division Three. All right, that'll do it for women's college soccer. When we come back, the head coach of the Wake Forest Demon Deacons, Jay Vitovich, is in the house right here on NSCAA-TV. The new fall flooring styles are here, and we've got them on sale now at Lumber Liquidators. Save on new hand-scraped and exotic hardwood, bamboo, laminate, and more. Choose from 53 floors under $2 a square foot. Don't wait. Sale's going on now at Lumber Liquidators. Each year, the NSCAA puts over 7,000 coaches through our coaching education program. Youth, high school, and college coaches at all levels participate in the diploma courses. Join your peers and get educated. Better coaching, better players, better game. NSCAA Coaching Academy. Improving soccer, one coach at a time. Register today at nscaa.com education. Welcome back to the Continental Tire Studios here in Chapel Hill for the NSCA Weekly College Highlights and Ranking Show. Dean Linky still with you. I want to thank the UNC women's head coach Anson Dorrance for stopping by. Now it's time to take a look at men's soccer and boy we've got another big seg segment on men. Let's take a look at it. Wake Forest head coach Jay Vitovich will join me in studio. We'll spend time with the undefeated in the Big Ten Penn State head coach Bob Warming. We'll take a look at Division 3's Wisconsin Oshkosh which is chasing Jay Vitovich's alma mater at Ohio Wesleyan. We'll have an NAI update on both men and women from Alan Grosbach and all the rankings and players of the week. Well, how about the job Jay Vitovich has done at Wake Forest? It's simply amazing. They had a big win on October 19th against Maryland, 4-3. to three. They play tonight against Davidson and on Friday night, we'll have them right here on NSCA TV as they take on Duke. But look at the success Jay Vitovich has had. In that Maryland victory, it was the 400th win for the Wake Forest program. Jay Vitovich led Wake Forest to the 2007 National Championship, played right down the road at Wake Med Soccer Park. They went to four consecutive college cups. His record is 259, 111, and 47, replacing the late, great Walt Chisowicz, who had 77 of those victories as well. And that sets the table perfectly for Jay Vitovich. Jay, we're delighted to have you here in studio. First of all, you got another big game tonight, but how about that huge win over Maryland? Oh, for sure. Like you said, uh, you know, great match tonight against Davidson. We'll have that at home. And uh, anybody who gets out of Ludwood Field with a result is always happy. So it was a, it was a great result for us uh, at a great place. In front of the most crazy fans you will ever see, somehow Maryland scored four goals. And guess what, Jay? We have them all. Break them down for us here on NSCA TV. Let's roll the highlights from Ludwig Field. Well, the first goal, you know, came uh, after a little bit of change of tide, but some good defending. Push uh, Hunter Bandy with his first start, pushes the ball and gets on in, gets a, gets a, a, the first goal. That's the second goal there with Luca Jimenez on a great individual effort with a run from midfield. 
here once again, uh, Sean Acoli being pushed through on, on the uh, flank and finds Luca Jimenez once again. So, uh, you know, great goals. They all came in about a 10 minute span. So, well done. Luca once again now find Ugo. Uh, Sean Acoli, who uh, is able to, you know, finish off in the box. So, just like the way they ran at it, uh, the way they attacked the box, and, uh, and uh, some good play. Just talk about what that was like, though, because it's some of the best fans in the country, as you know, although Wake Forest has great fans as well. Four goals in the first half, that never happens up in College Park. No, for sure. I mean, uh, like you said, it, what a great place to play. They're, they're fans. We need those all over America, um, that, that crew. But to get in there and get, get one uh, early and then uh, you know, to find two, uh, it, was, it was a great situation. Obviously, you know, knowing Maryland, you know, coming back with the goal. Uh, so it's a 2-1 deal. And then... Uh, Guys responded at that point. You know, we gave a penalty kick, and for the next two goals to get that was, uh, you know, was a great result for our guys. It just showed a lot. Uh, some guys were getting their first starts in the in the game, and uh, just thought the way they responded as a team coming off a, a loss from Akron was fantastic. Take us back to that run, 2006 through 2009, four straight college cups and winning the national championship. Not that long ago, just six years ago. What a great run! Well, I wish it wasn't that long ago, <laughs> but uh, it seems like a long time ago. But uh, for sure, what a, what a fantastic run! You know, the, the first time you know breaking through and, and getting your shot at the at the college cup and the experience of that, and you never know if you get back. And then for the for the guys to turn around and the next year. Uh, just really pushed and, and find the national championship. That was just a, a special moment, as you know, anybody who's done it, it will tell you. But uh, I think what was even better was then to be able to follow it up. You know, we'd have a couple, you know, like our freshman class went to four Final Fours. That was a, a tremendous uh, accomplishment for the boys. Well, indeed. And I know one of the reasons you wanted to come is because this show is presented by NSCAA. And you replace an icon in the NSCAA. They have awards named after them. And now at Wake Forest, as we take a look here, I think it's fantastic. Tell us what we're looking at right there, Jay. Well, at the, at the, uh, we've, had a, we've had a hill at, uh, you know, on the backside of one of our goals uh, at the stadium. And, you know, in the last two years, our, our alumni just said, you know, we've got to do something to... Uh, you know, build the stadium, take it another step, and we were able to do it. And you know, to get Walt's name on there, and it was just uh, it, it means a lot to have his name, you know, permanently in the stadium, permanently uh, you know associated with the program. So it meant a lot to me personally, you know, for all he's done for my career and, and for Wake Forest and soccer in America, and uh, and to see, I think we were very you know very fortunate to open it up against uh, North Carolina, and uh, the result was fantastic with. Uh, uh, I think we had like 5,000 people there. It was a packed house. The atmosphere was 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 uh, rivaled Maryland, so it was it was great there. And and to see to see it grow, and I think it was just fitting that uh, you know we got the go you know the tying goal in like the last minute of play, right there going to Walt's wall. So it was a it was a great feeling. That is awesome, as everybody at the NSCA loves Walt Chiswick. All right, let's go ahead and break down Division I men's college soccer, and these are some of the storylines we will be following on this program and throughout the week. California, Notre Dame, and Washington still unbeaten. That's why they are 1, 2, and 3 in the country. A big matchup on Sunday as Jorge Salcedo's UCLA Bruins will take on Jamie Clark's Washington Huskies. Louisville and UConn in a big American Athletic Conference battle that was seen right here on NSCA TV. And then here are the teams that are climbing, Jay. Furman, Wake Forest, Santa Barbara, and VCU. Now's the right time to climb as well. For sure, you know, it, it, to see, you know, the work. You can see where Furman, you know, they've had a, a great season all the way along. They just had a, a great result over Elon this, uh, this last weekend. So another fantastic team. So you can see them going. UCSB making a great run. VCU's had, not sure if you can say they're climbing. They've had, what results they've had, you know, with uh, you know, with Be beating Maryland, Maryland and Akron, Indiana. Indiana. I mean, you, you can't go too much uh, too much better in college soccer. Well, let's take a look now at the new top ten that is just released right now. And as you take a look at it, any thoughts, Coach? Well, I think you know just some things like how impressive it is in, with the parity that's going on in college soccer that the top three, you know, with Cal. Uh, Coach Grimes has done a fantastic job there to turn around from last year, and obviously, you know, uh, you know they, they've, to be 10 and 0 right now in, the, in, the, in college soccer is fantastic. Notre Dame, Coach Clark, uh, you know, what a, what a great role there, and just uh, bring more pride to the ACC. So we're, we're happy about that inclusion there, and, and his son there at, uh, at Washington just getting it done too. So uh, it's going to be a battle uh, between the two of them, maybe somewhere down the road. It'll be interesting. We'll take a look here now at 11 through 20. And, of course, Maryland, uh, this is their last year in the ACC. Clemson doing a great job in Wake Forest at 15. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, once again, I, I think it's you know a testament to you know to Dougie Allison with what he's doing at, at Furman there. It's, it's one loss I think it was to Akron early in the season. To get on that type of role right now is fantastic. You know, obviously the Terrapins, you know, Sash and what they're doing, you know, they're just a very difficult team, and they'll, you know, Ludwig is a tough place to play. So, uh, great job there, Coach Warming, another one, and you know, and, and Noonan at uh, at Clemson, that that team there, there's just a, you can see a whole new, you know, uh, energy. They're they're more polished now with what they're doing. You can just see the there's a new belief in them, and I think a lot of that's been the rival of you know. Uh, Thomas McNamara and, and what, what's done for their program, so they've done a great job there. Uh, you mentioned Coach Bob Warming there, undefeated after four Big Ten contests, 9-3-1 and one overall, 424 wins for smiling Bob Warming as the two-time National Coach of the Year and the reigning Big Ten Coach of the Year, and I caught up with the coach of the Nittany Lions yesterday on a beautiful day in Happy Valley. And as promised, we're joined by the fine head coach of the Penn State men's soccer team. Here he is outdoors in October at Jeffrey Field. You see over his shoulder right there, the beautiful Beaver Stadium on the campus of Penn State University. And Bob, you've got a lot of reason to smile. Undefeated in Big Ten play with a relatively new team. Talk about the success. Oh, it's just been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. You know, look at this environment we're in today. It's a it's a beautiful place for our guys to come to train every day. The guys in, enjoy it. They're enjoying playing with each other. And uh, I think that's added to a lot of success. Really, some great synergy between the team. Grant Warming really having himself a wonderful senior campaign. Well, he is because the team's winning. You know, if Grant was playing well and the team was losing, uh, I don't know how happy he'd be. He's a guy who likes to win, kind of like his dad. Well, he's doing great. And I'll tell you what, been calling games all over the country this fall, and arguably the best goalkeeper I've seen is in the pipes for you. Andrew Wolverton is a beast. <laughs> he's a big old boy. He's a big guy, and, and you know what? He's doing ever so well. And, and a lot of that credit is uh, goes to our strength and conditioning coach who uh, – you know, Andrew came in at 185, and I think he's about 225 right now. He's almost 6'6". Six, six. Uh, it goes to uh, Bo Shawnee, who's an incredible goalkeeping trainer. You know, Bo, 10 years as a pro, won the MLS championship. He's got a lot of experience and a lot of things to, to talk to Andrew about. That uh, uh, He's a real players coach. Bo's a great players coach, and I think that relationship has helped Andrew blossom. Finally, November rolling around the Big Ten tournaments in Columbus, Ohio this year. Your expectations for the rest of the season, Coach? You know, I, I said this before. I just don't want to put any limitations on our guys. I think, um, you know, it's it's the last time we were in the Final Four at Penn State was 1979. That was 34 years ago. Our guys would like to make sure it's not 35. Uh, I, I don't want to put any limitations at all on them. I think that uh, our goal is to continue to improve every day, to come with great enthusiasm to training, to come and enjoy the day, uh, get as much out of it as you possibly can, and let's see where this thing ends up. Smiling Bob Warming, the head coach of the Penn State men's soccer team. Thanks so much for joining us on the show, Bob. Thanks, Dean. You're always the best. Today's interview with Bob Warming and all of the interviews and features on this program are presented by Shattuck St. Mary's, a college prep boarding school with a full-time residential soccer center of excellence for boys and girls and a member of the U.S. Soccer Development Academy. We thank Jesse Fortney and Tim Carter from their beautiful minnesota base campus. To learn more, visit www.s-sm.org. We're not done with 11 through 20. Let's go back to those Wake Forest Demon Deacons because guess what? On Friday night right here on NSCAA. TV. We've got a big one from Durham, North Carolina. It's the Wake Forest Demon Deacons and the Duke Blue Devils. That'll be a big matchup, Jay. For sure. I mean, it's, a, it's another ACC uh, matchup. I think it adds a lot of uh, flavor to it in terms of, one, it's a, it's a big senior night for, for the Duke seniors, so I'm sure they'll want in a, a tremendous send-off. I think uh, next part is that uh, the ACC tournament this year with, uh, in terms of only eight teams making in the first time, the new people, new, new programs into the, pro, into the conference, it adds a lot there. So now it's a, everybody's going to have to qualify for it. And I know Duke, that's very important for them. And for us, you know, at the top of the table, just trying to stay there and uh, stay eligible for, for that championship. All right, let's take a look at the final five here in this week's Division I rankings. Tim Baum Stieg at 21. How about Virginia at 23? I'll tell you what, you know, uh, George has done a fantastic job up there. They're a young group, and uh, I know, you know, 
it was an interesting game between us, 3-2, and at the end of that, I, I'm not sure. I think this last weekend was the first time they've taken a, a loss. They're a young group. They get after it. They go to goal, and uh, they're very good. And, you know, I know the next one is, is VCU, and that's another you know, tremendous team. You know, uh, Dave has, has done a great job with turning them around. And, uh, like I said, the, the number of scalps they've taken this year from, from top programs has been tremendous. Indeed, in our Disney Soccer NSCAA Player of the Week is Denzel Clark. He's from Gardner-Webb, and he exploded this week with four goals in two of their victories in Big South Conference play. Congratulations to Denzel Clark as he is climbing up the ladder. Now, that is it for Division I men's soccer as we bring back in Jay Vidovich. And Jay, we're getting ready to talk Division Two and Three, and you're really a great gentleman to have on this because you went to Ohio Wesleyan. You know all about how important those levels are for college soccer. Uh, for sure, you know, uh, you know the, the development of soccer, and you look at how many leaders have come out of Division Three. you know, with the, you know, obviously my, my mentor, Jay Martin at, at Ohio Wesleyan, what he's done, but there's some, just some tremendous, you know, coaches in, in Division Three and what they've done to develop and push the game is, you know, it's just a, it's, it's a group project, so to speak, and they're, they're making a lot of things happen. All right, let's take a look here now at the Division II Top 10 here for men's soccer. As we're delighted to be with you on NSCAA TV. And LIU Post is at number one, and Rollins is at number two. Rockhurst at nine, and Southern New Hampshire is at number 10. Your Division II Disney Soccer Player of the Week is Marco Warren. The Flagler sophomore forward from Bermuda scored three goals in two games this week, including two game winners against nationally ranked opponents. Congratulations to Marco Warren. And your Division III Disney Soccer Player of the Week is Sean Bernardi from Geneva College, the sophomore midfielder. Congratulations, Sean scored a big goal and a win over Westminster. Now, Jay, as we take a look here at your top 10, no surprise, you mentioned Jay Martin. We actually featured him in a show just a week ago. They actually now call it the Jay Martin Soccer Complex, as you may know. Ohio Wesleyan, 16-0. Tell you that, that guy just doesn't stop. He's made it impossible for anybody to catch him on the wins department. There, he's already had that a, two years ago. I think he had the most wins in college soccer, and he's just got the boys going once again. You know, 16-0 is just a, a fantastic once again to, to do that. The consistency that's going on there, just an unbelievable job. Now, chasing Jay Martin in Ohio Wesleyan is Wisconsin Oshkosh, and here's Brandon Kennard with an inside look at the Titans' undefeated season. We're here at the Oshkosh Sports Complex, home of the nationally ranked UW Oshkosh men's soccer team. The Titans unbeaten on the season, and despite bouncing between goalkeepers, the key has been on the defensive side of the ball. 14 games into the season, and the Titans have allowed just six goals, which is in the top 10 in the nation. The more impressive spin on that may be that most of the work was done without junior goalkeeper Nick Berry, who missed the first 11 games of the season due to injury. Needless to say, UWO head coach Vitsa Molinar is pleased to see his veteran stopper back between the posts. It's just good to see him back. I mean, he's one of the leaders on the team, and, um, you know, he's been, been fighting a few little injuries here lately too, but uh, he should be all fit to go again on this, this upcoming Saturday. Offensively, the Titans are just starting to get things rolling. They've scored 18 goals in their last three games. The balanced offensive attack has been led by senior Tony Starnes, who has 14 points on the season. Starnes returned to the Titans lineup this year after being sidelined by a torn ACL. Molinar says that despite the injury, he wasn't worried about Starnes' rehab process and says he expects him to continue to get better and better. It's been good in the sense that, hey, we've kind of had shared responsibilities in the on the offensive side and um, we've slowly but surely been able to get it really in and, and uh, you know, contribute his part and, um, you know, I'm expecting... Uh, bigger and better things even uh, going forward from here. Offensively it's more balanced scoring and we've kind of been gaining confidence as the season's been going on. Like you said it's been slow in the beginning but now we're picking up fast. It's just every game improving, working towards playoffs. Despite the undefeated record in the number six national ranking, Mullinar and the team aren't looking forward to the postseason and the head coach knows what that takes having brought the Titans to the national semifinal just three seasons ago. You have to be hot at the right time and, and you know something may happen that would cause us to, to not be good enough at that point and uh, you know but I mean it's a good it's a positive thing in the sense that um, you know it gets everybody excited it gets me excited and it gets the guys excited and, and now it's really hey we, we want to you know make sure we keep it going too and 
Thank you, Brandon, and congratulations to Wisconsin Oshkosh as we take a look now here at the junior college level. This is your men Division I rankings in Iowa Western. They do it on the women's side. They also do it on the men's side. Peninsula College is at number 10. We take a look here now at junior college men Division Three, and you see Herkimer County Community College still at number one. That's where they were last week as well. Moving up, Mount San Antonio College and Cerritos College. They weren't even ranked. They're now at number nine at eight, two, and one. Now for the complete story on men and women in the NAIA, let's throw it to the NAIA's Alan Grossbach. This is an exciting time in NAIA soccer as we're approximately two-thirds of the way through the regular season, so conference races are really beginning to heat up. On the women's side, the top five squads, Lindsey Wilson, Concordia from Portland, Oregon, Westmont, California, Northwood, Florida, and Embry-Riddle, Florida, have really separated themselves from the rest of the pack. Top-ranked Lindsey Wilson has been listed atop the pole five times this season. The defending champion Blue Raiders are 4-2-0 against ranked opponents. However, they dropped a pivotal Mid-South Conference match 1-0 to number 11 Cumberland, Tennessee last Wednesday. Lindsey Wilson has three conference matches remaining before opening Mid-South tournament play on November 9th. Out West, Westmont and Concordia have proven as two strong sides. The Warriors entered this past weekend as one of only three remaining unbeaten squads at 9-0-3. Westmont has four matches left in their regular season, including two against ranked teams, so not an easy road for them either. Concordia has been equally as dominant in the Cascade Collegiate Conference. An interesting background story for the Cavaliers this, this season has been head coach Grant Laney's pursuit of this 300th career win. He entered the year ranked second on the active list with 289 victories, trailing only Oklahoma City's head coach Brian Harvey. Landy would be the second active NAI women's soccer coach with 300 victories. The remainder of the top five I mentioned are housed out east in the Sun Conference. The two sides faced off on October 11th with Northwood claiming a 3-2 overtime victory. It was the Seahawks' first ever win against a number one ranked team and extended their regular season conference unbeaten streak to 32 matches and gives them kind of a leg up in the Sun Conference. In my opinion, there are also a few teams to watch out for in addition to those top five I mentioned. Avila, Missouri, Our Lady Lake, Texas, Davenport, Michigan, Cumberland are just a few. Kind of shifting gears to the men's side, perennial contenders Lindsey Wilson and Rio Grande of the Mid-South Conference, in addition to defending national champion Bellhaven of the Southern States Athletic Conference, have separated themselves from the pack as the only teams that have been ranked among the top ten in every poll this year. The Blue Raiders of Lindsey Wilson have been number one the past three weeks and all three teams have been ranked in the top five each of the past four polls. Some newcomers this year have been Georgia Gwinnett, Cal State San Marcos, Wayland Baptist, Campbellsville, Corbin, and Our Lady of the Lake Texas. They each earned their first top 25 distinction this year and that's dating back to 2000. Jimmy Hampton of Science and Arts Oklahoma earned his 200th career victory on October 8th when the Drovers defeated John Brown 3-0. Hampton is the 18th active coach with 200 more wins, so a nice milestone there. You know, as we continue through the rest of the season, rest assured that these races will continue to heat up as we move down the home stretch. And don't forget, NAIA National Champ Championship Selection Sunday is less than a month away. It's scheduled for November 17th. All right, thank you, Alan. Great job indeed as we're here with Jay Vitovich, the head coach of Wake Forest. And on Friday night, we've got to remind you that we've got Duke and Wake Forest right here on NSCAA TV. John Kerr and Jay Vitovich should be a great ACC battle. A fantastic one, you know. Once again, to be, be at their place on a, on a Friday night is great for college soccer. It'll be a, a tremendous game. So very excited about it and the opportunity to, to play. I look forward to seeing your team. Jay Vitovich, the head coach of the Wake Forest Steve. men's soccer team, delighted to have you. We thank Jay and say goodbye to him. want to remind you also that that Duke-Wake Forest game, not the only games remaining on the NSCAA TV schedule. We've got some more big-time games right around the corner as William and Mary will host James Madison on Wednesday, November 6th. And speaking of Philadelphia, we'll be up there at PPNL Park for Army and Navy Friday, November 8th as we've had some fantastic Fantastic games right here on NSCAA TV. And guess what? We'll be right back in this seat next week for another edition of the NSCA Weekly College Highlights and Ranking Show. That can be seen Tuesday, October 29th at 1 p.m. right here on NSCAA TV. So many people to thank. We're delighted to have the input from everybody, but especially Anson Dorrance, the head coach of UNC, and Jay Vitovich, 
the fine head coach of the Wake Forest men's soccer team. Definitely want to thank Stephen Wright for making sure that Jay Vitovich got here on time as well. All the great people that helped us in the SIDs and of course the wonderful people out in Kansas City led by Joe Cummings and Kathleen Hermesh doing another great job on all the graphics here for NSCAA TV. I want to thank Taylor Hoggard and Kyle Lang and all of our wonder, wonderful cameramen as well. For everybody at NSCAA TV, I'm Dean Linke saying thanks for watching NSCAA TV.